happy Sunday to you. I welcome you to the Really Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God, powered by the Pastor Leonard Eco Center for Inspiration. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem sown upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are shining truth this morning on what I call the careful, not everything can be put in writing. And that's coming from 2 John 7 to the end of it. Shall we pray together this fine Sunday morning? Father God, we bless you and give you glory and praise. We are glad. Whenever we hear, let us go into the house of the Lord. And on account of that, again, we rejoice at that which you have um, given us, you have made available to us. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, before we go to that church, we will share together with your people and we ask that you help us at that which we do this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, Second John and 7 now. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we have worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses does not abide in the doctrine and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares his evil deeds. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. Children of your elect sister, I greet you. Amen. Okay. Now it says, many deceivers have gone into the world. Do not confess Jesus Christ as having come in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. We will notice something, and I think I've said this before. That um, at the time this thing was being written, and they, at their own time, their own period, the big thing was, do you believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh or not? I mean, that the Messiah has come or not? That's the thing. That Jesus Christ you saw, that was God in flesh or not? That was it. These are ideas. We don't have any problem with that. Everybody believes that, ah, the Messiah, ah, the Christ. Everybody says that with upon his lips, you know. So we don't have any big problem. But nevertheless, we still have deceivers. It's just that the, the focus of the deceivers at this point in time, completely different from the focus of the deceivers at that other time. Praise God. So, the focus of the, deliver, the, the deceivers at this point in time is not to argue or to um, shake your faith in Christ or is having come and things like that. No. It's to make you feel, yes, Christ has come and yeah, we are actually are representing him. He's a, we are his messenger. He's the one who sent us to you to say a lot of rubbish. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise God. But that's the way it comes these days. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 24, it says a lot of people um, false teachers and false prophets, they have gone out into the world and they will do great miracles and wonders in so much that if they are not careful, the very elect will be deceived. What's the meaning of deceiver? No more than that. Praise the Lord. No more than that. And then, of course, you remember the story of the, the, the parable of the tears. I'm not sure I have enough time to be reading uh, that at this point in time. The parable of the tears in Matthew chapter 13. Yes, from verse 24. The parable, he put another parable for to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And when the grain sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. And the servants of the owner said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in the field? How come it has tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. How should we then gather them? Mm, don't gather them. Let them just go on because you may mistakenly uproot the wheat along with the tears. At the fullness of time, at the end, the angels of God shall come and they will separate. Listen to me. We are in those ends of time and everything has grown together. Today we are in a place where we don't even know the tears from the wheat. Um, some people are so big and they say some really big things. Everybody takes what they are saying because of their bigness. Some of them are wheat, some of them are tear. And you don't know the difference. That's the meaning of deceivers going into the world. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Second um, Timothy, it says uh, at a certain point in time, there are people out there deceiving and being deceived. That's what is going on exactly right now. And, and indeed, may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'm sure you have had a lot in the last couple of days in terms of prophecies and predictions and things like that. You don't even know which one is wit and which one is tears. They are just coming forth and uh, you know, don't you worry. God says at the right time, you will, will separate stuff. Amen. So they are indeed out into the world there and you've you got to be 
careful and sensitive to the spirit and know your know the word very well when you know it very well the moment you hear somebody saying something that is extra biblical immediately you just say to yourself this is extra biblical but if you don't know the bible you may not know you may not be able to say glory be to jesus christ <clears throat> so so it says in verse 8 it says look to yourself again we are back to this take heed again we are back to this um uh, be careful Again, we are back to this pay attention to yourself. You put it this way, say, look to yourself. That's the way. In this week, <laughs> we have said so much about being careful, about looking to yourself, about policing yourself, about bewaring, about, you know, and all those things. We have said the same thing in so many different words and phrases, you know, but it's about looking to yourself, being careful, um, paying attention to yourself, maintaining focus, you know, and all those things. He said, be careful, look to yourself so that you don't lose the things you have worked for that you may receive a reward. This is interesting. If what he's saying is this, there's a possibility of losing your reward even before you die, even before you pass. Even before you go to stand before, you have already lost your reward here. Be careful so that it doesn't happen to you. You don't lose your reward. You know, even while still here, even before you pass, even before you transit. I think it's a little bit scary and it's something that, you know, the Lord is saying to us at this point. It says, look to yourself so that the things you have worked for, it's not as if um, you are missing out on the reward because you are lazy. It's not as if you are missing out on, on the compensation uh, because you were lazy, because you didn't do anything. No. It says, be careful so that the things you worked for, you were busy, you were active, you were diligent, you did some things, you did, you did well. But however, because you didn't look to yourself, because you, didn't, you are not careful, the things you actually worked for, you, you lose your reward. Scary, isn't it? God help us in Jesus' mighty name. And then it goes on in, in, in verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the doctrine um, has both the Father and the Son. Let me talk about that because I missed out on something like that the last time. Was it in this uh, same book or in the Gospels? I've forgotten now. But what I want to say is this. <clears throat> this transgression. There is a way some people try to say, yes, it's in this same John, but I think it was in first, we were still in first John at that point in time. Yes. So where it says all transgression is sin. Yeah. Some some people, these hyper grace people, they try to make a distinction. There's a difference between sin and transgression. I say difference between transgression and iniquity. And all the, those all those things are sins. And so the Bible says here that whoever transgresses, you will not abide in the doctrine of Christ. If you don't, it means you don't have God. That's what he's trying to say. Praise God. So transgression is, is, just, as, is just the same thing. Transgression means crossing the line. That's it. But then it is a sin as far as God is concerned. And you don't, you don't, you are not really working properly. Amen. Let's go to the other part of it. Now, if anybody comes to you and does not bring the, this particular doctrine, can you remember I said that the truth is always constant. The truth remains forever. Facts may change, but the truth is the truth. If anybody comes to you, does not bring the doctrine of truth. It says, do not entertain them. Do not welcome them to your house. Do not, do not uh, accommodate them. That's what he's trying to say now. Do not accommodate. You know all this political correctness and you know and emotional intelligence and 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 this and that, which will allow you to at least bear with him. He says, don't. He says, because you don't want to partake of his sin. That's what he says. That's what he says. When it comes to heresy, please do not allow room for those things. He says, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. What he's talking about there is the person who accommodates it. The person who says, okay, we are, we are, after all, we are one, actually, you know, and all that. You don't do that with heresy. You don't do that with, with what is not truth. You don't, you know, yeah. You, you, at times, when people do not have a full understanding of truth, you, be, you put up with them and go on to try to get them to understand. But when it's absolute heresy, you don't entertain that. You don't accommodate that for any reason. And I've seen a couple of it on social media. You know, somebody, because he's so big, will open his mouth and make a pronouncement. Well, what? This is extra biblical. 
It says, do not entertain them. That's what the Bible is saying here. That if you entertain them, if you accommodate them, if you, you are sharing in their evil deeds, and that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. It now says, I have many things to write to you, but I do not wish to do so with paper and ink. I will come to you and will speak face to face so that our joy may be full. Amen. And that is our punchline today. Not everything can be put in writing. John was writing, he says, I have a lot of things, many to write to you, but I do not want to put them on paper. When I come and we see, we will discuss this matter so that our joy may be full. There are certain things you put on paper. It is that very putting it on paper does not allow your joy to be full. Particularly in these days of the social media. Some people are so quick. Everything pyam, is on the social media. Everything pyam, is on the social media. Comments here and there are things that you ought not to put on paper. Things that you ought not to write down. There are plenty of those things. He says, I have many. That's what John says. I have many things I would have loved to write to you, but I cannot put them on paper. Hallelujah. And I think we should learn a lesson from there. It is not everything that can go on paper. It's not everything that you can type uh, as a message. It's not everything that you go on social media. It's not everything that you write down. Writing make it a man exact. The moment you have put it, in, put it in writing, it is difficult to reverse it. Even when you say you made a mistake, the one you have written is still there. Hallelujah. It is still there. And some people can say, oh, but he apologized later. Oh, I never noticed his apology. This is the one I noticed. Oh, yes, yeah, very possible. So it's not everything you put in writing. Not everything you put on paper. That's what John, the elderly man, said. I will really have things to, a lot of things to, have to write to you, but I'm not going to put everything in ink and paper. And I pray that somebody will learn that lesson in these our times. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a Sunday. And therefore, I'm encouraging you to go out there and enjoy church. Yes, I know that you can also enjoy church online. But you know something? You are not likely to be able to hug anybody online. You are not likely to be able to whisper something to somebody online. But I do wish you to commend somebody's looks. You will to whisper something to somebody's ears, give somebody a hug, you know, and all that. I really would love you to do that today as you go to church. That is part of why God created church. And uh, may you fulfill that role uh, that God expects of you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. Have a fantastic week ahead of you. Amen.